Okay, so, uh, Cats Cancer Chronicles, episode two. Um, I know I said I would make the next one after I had talked to my oncologist again, but I figured there's enough material from today's events to warrant a video. Uh, so I had my surgery today, this afternoon. Uh, they actually had me come in early because there was a cancellation. So that was kind of cool, getting out there a little bit sooner than anticipated. Um, they took me back to pre-op right away. Uh, so, you know, typical stuff, typical questions, you know, go through a pregnancy test. Surprise, I'm not pregnant. Um, put on the backless gown and the, the weird socks with the grippy bottoms. Uh, then they go to put the IV in me. I'm like, good luck. I mean, if I've had food and something to drink, you know, you can find a vein on me really, really easy. Like, people find it the first try, no difficulties whatsoever. But, since I was having general anesthesia today, my first time ever, um, I wasn't allowed to eat or drink anything after midnight last night. So, it's like, you want to find a vein on me? Good luck. Good luck. Uh, the first pre-op nurse tried to go in right here on me. Didn't work. So, then, uh, they tried wrapping my arms in warm blankets <laughs> to try and like cook them to make a vein pop out. Uh, that uh, didn't exactly work, but they tried again. Different pre-op nurse came in, tried to go in through my hand. Obviously, no dice. Uh, so they wrapped my arms up in warm blankets again and they called for IV therapy. Who are apparently like the super awesome pros at putting in IVs. Uh, at that point I had been back there a while uh, so they called my parents back to sit with me because they didn't want them sitting out in the waiting room thinking oh my god something's gone wrong we've been waiting out here forever and they said we'd be coming back pretty quickly. So they brought my parents back and uh, my father tried to steal my thunder you know, it's my first time ever having surgery, my first time ever having any sedation, even, uh, let alone general anesthesia. And uh, so, basically, without putting all of his private medical details on blast, uh, my father has high blood pressure, runs in the family. And uh, he was particularly stressing out today. So... He was kind of going into the hypertensive crisis range of things, <laughs> and uh, he took a trip down to the ER. So, great job, Dad. Um, but yeah, after he went away, the IV therapy woman showed up, and she got it on her first try. Awesome. It took her a good, like, five minutes to plan out what she was going to do. Like, she had to check the left arm, and then the right arm, and then she went back to the left. But, you know, she got it in. Uh, not the greatest spot, apparently, but it was in. It was good. Um, and then, you know, right after that, I got to talk to the surgeon and the anesthesiologist, and off I went. <laughs> uh, don't, obviously don't remember much. Um, because, you know, I remember looking around, you know, being like, oh, wow, this room is cool, nice big machines, big lamps, this is awesome, and then the anesthesiologist put the mask over my face, and he was like, just breathe normally, it's just oxygen for now, that's the last thing I remember, um, until I woke up, and there's a nurse standing there, how bad's the pain? Give it a three, I mean, the port doesn't hurt, the neck, the neck is the only thing that's a bit sore, achy, hurting. Um, but it wasn't that bad. Still, she was like, you know, it's gonna start to hurt worse when the anesthesia wears off, so here, have a Percocet. Uh, yes please. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Um, but, you know, it didn't take too long for me to get out of there. I mean, I was out, out of the hospital within an hour of waking up. 
Um, you know, and I wasn't, you know, waiting to wake up for too long, I think they said. Uh, so that's cool. Um, so yeah, you can see I got the mark right here. They, uh, where they, I think they took out the golf ball lymph node entirely. It's hard to tell. I mean, it's a little swollen and achy because, I mean, hello, they cut me open. Um, so I don't want to be, like, pushing on it. And, sorry, you can see, like, some of the marks. It's from, you know, all the crap that they were putting on me in the markers. Because this is where they would have done the media stenoscopy if they had to do it, which they didn't. Uh, my port is right here. Right here. You can feel it. It's got some tape over it right now. So, that's cool. Everything's on the left initially. They made it seem like everything was going to be on the right. Um, it was even on the paperwork that it was going to be on the right, but then they decided to do a left side. So, uh, yeah, the port thing's cool. I even get like a brochure explaining like everything about my port and how awesome it is. And I get a card to keep in my wallet so that I can show it to all the nurses and be like, here's an explanation of my port and how to access it and what you can all do with it. And you even get like a little keychain. I have a little keychain thingy to put on there. <laughs> um, so that, that's kind of weird. It's like I'm accessorizing something that's inside my body. Okay. So that's all I have for now. Um, the next video will definitely be after I've talked to the oncologist and know for sure what I have and what the treatment will be. So, until next time.